Hey there guys, welcome back to a brand new Flick Pick Live show. This is it, don't get scared, and I'm sorry for the delay, it's been a few weeks, a few very busy weeks, and it's probably going to be a little bit longer after this one, and we'll dive into that in just one second, but first, and most importantly, how are you doing? What's new? Thanks for joining me, I hope you have popcorn, something cold to drink, and I have a tasty, caffeinated, delicious beverage right here. It's the Nectar of the Gods, it's Sour Patch Kids Flavored Ghost. Oh, give it to me now. I just, I want to put that into a syringe and just inject it. Uh, so yeah, this week I was actually in Cleveland Fan Expo and it was a good time. I was there with a couple YouTube buddies, Sean uh, Chandler and Austin Burke. Had a good time. I got to meet some of you awesome people uh, and that was nice. Uh, I met uh, one nice lady who said she's been watching for 10 years had a nice 20 minute conversation. So thanks for showing up that that made me feel warm and tingly inside. Um, but yeah, it was a good time. And also I, I, I remember one of the panels we did this weekend. I looked into the audience soon as we walked in and there was a few people waiting around and there was someone dressed like SpongeBob and they never talked and all they did is wave and they sat back there patiently and quietly and I thought to myself, what's happening right now? How did I get here? <laughs> but hey, I'll take what I can get. All right. Uh, so the first big announcement I want to make is if you guys are going to Orlando's Megacon, uh, I'm going to be there along with a whole bunch of other people, such as these fine folks right here up in the corner, this corner here. Um, so yeah, I'll be there Friday, Saturday. I take off early Sunday, but we're doing a multitude of panels, meeting, meet and greets before and after. Uh, so if you see me, give me a high five, a hug, let's shake hands. I don't care. Do whatever you want. Um, yeah, do whatever you want. I don't care. Uh, so either way, yeah, we'll be there with everybody in this picture right here. Should be a good time. And I've heard it's a huge event. And uh, yeah, so I take off in a few days for that. So if you guys are going there, please let me know. Please find me. If you want the event details of all the panels and the times and everywhere we're going to be, uh, go to my Twitter or go to Facebook and uh, just click that post that shows the Megacon post and you just click it, go to the thread and all the info is right there below it. Every place, everywhere you need to be. All right. So with all that said, I'll just dive into your glorious magical questions here and the first one comes from who does this come from let's see chad hagan how's it going chad the goonies too yay or nay i'm all yay all day man give me some of that i need that i want to see what just give me some booby traps i hope they go on another adventure and i'm sure at this point the original goonies will be adults and their kids will go on the adventure but then again I would sort of like to see some middle-aged men going through a midlife crisis, try to find themselves dealing with the depression of getting older, working nine to five jobs, and even sloth. Like I want sloth to be working a normal job. Like what could sloth be doing? Maybe he's like an executive of like a fortune 500 company. You know, he's, he's running Google or something, you know, that would make sense to me. Uh, he's there too. And they go on another adventure. I mean, it would make sense. I mean, the majority of the actors that were in the original are still acting, to, acting today. Um, you got Josh Brolin, maybe he'd return. You have Sean Astin, you got Corey Feldman. I don't think he's doing much else nowadays. Uh, you got Short Round, who was just in a the the number one movie of the year, or not the number one movie, but the uh, the Oscars number one movie of the year. So yes, please, I would love to see that. Uh, so I'm all for it. What makes sequel year? Wait, okay, you had another part to your question here. What make what makes sequels years in the making succeed? Well, typically, if they're just good and worth the wait, they work. But sometimes you get like this bastardized, watered down, very bland digital version of its former self. And the best example I can give you give you out of many uh, would be, uh, oh, I just read a funny comment. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Uh, would be like something like Bill and Ted's whatever new adventure they went on a couple of years ago. And I'm a huge Bill, Bill and Ted fan. Love the first couple movies and uh, which are the only couple movies. And then we got a third movie 
And it just was sort of boring. I was like, yeah, this was the movie you wanted to make. Like, I was super excited for it until we got it. Another one was, um, I don't know, Jalen. You know, actually, another one would be Jane Silent Bob reboot. I wasn't a huge fan of that either. I waited a while. But, yeah, just get, give a quality film. Give, give fans a story they want to see. And I think everyone will be pleased by it. So I'm hoping the new Goonies movie, I just... Please take me back to a happy place. All right, the next one comes from Kirk Hollick. Hey, John, hope you're doing well. I'm not doing too bad. I'll be tired for the next seven days, but who needs sleep? Uh, that's what caffeine's for. If there was to be a new John Wick spinoff movie, would you rather it be about Mr. Nobody or Kane? Keep it up, man. Um, Why not both? Maybe you could do a little bit of both in there. I'm not quite sure what I would like to see. There was also another character in the new John Wick film I feel like they're going to lean towards. But honestly, if I had to pick one, I'd go with Kane. I think Kane's far more interesting. He was one of my favorite things about the new John Wick movie. Uh, Donnie Yen, you can do no wrong. I mean, just give me more of that man. I thought he stole every scene he was in in the new John Wick film. And I would be lying if I didn't say I enjoyed Kane's character more than John Wick's character. I love me some Keanu, but man, I think it was nice to see something new with Kane. So, I mean, and, and the thing with Kane is there's endless possibilities you could do with his character. You could you could almost have a prequel movie going back 20 years with his character. And maybe you could have Donnie Yen for some of it, or you could cast someone else similar in tone and ability that actually knows how to do martial arts, and that would be pretty kick-ass. So, yeah, I was I was a fan of Kane to say the least, but that's probably the direction I go in thinking about it more now. Yeah, I'd go with that. Uh, someone asked John, "Did you see Dungeons and Dragons?" I did, in fact, see Dungeons and Dragons. I put out a quick first reaction. I'm trying to shoot a review for it tonight. I'm trying to edit it tomorrow, and then I hop on a plane like seven hours after that. Uh, so I'm gonna try to get that out. But I will just say I really enjoyed the movie. Yeah. Wasn't bad. Pleasant surprise. Two solid movies in one week with John Wick 4 and Dungeons and Dragons. Who would have ever thought? James Dozier says, hey, John, hope you're doing good. Oh, by the way, I'll take this off now. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Uh, James Dozier says, hey, John, hope you're doing good. Did you enjoy the Rush Hour movies? I was never a hardcore fan of the Rush Hour movies. I know. Crazy, right? Um, I like him. I like me some J Jackie Chan, but I was never like, I just, I, I don't want to say I didn't like them. That's not, that would be a lie. That would be a blatant lie. And I will not lie to you. Um, uh, but I, yeah, I liked him. I just never was a hardcore fan. I liked the first one far more than the second movie. Um, but I sort of like Shanghai noon with Owen Wilson and Jackie Chan. That was sort of a guilty pleasure of mine for many years. I don't want to say Okay. Did you guys hear a robot? Did a or, or did a British guy start talking with one of these questions? Let me know if you heard a British voice. <laughs> Just let me know if there was a British voice that started talking for this question. If it didn't, I sound utterly insane right now, but I set up something where a British guy would talk. Let me know if you heard it. <laughs> Please, someone let me know. And I'll explain myself in one moment. Max Nugenbauer. Okay, the British guy talked. Think. Okay, yay, technology. Okay, good. Did it sound okay? Did, did the British voice sound okay? So I set up something special. If anyone does a super chat over $10, $10 and above, uh, the question will be read aloud by a British man. I call him Mr. Belvedere, and he lives in my closet. And when he's not in my closet, I keep him in my basement in a very large pickle jar. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> let's go to the next one. All right. So, Edward Nito, here's your question, man. And thank you for the very, very generous super chat. Sup, John? I hope you're doing well, man. My wife and I are watching Better Call Saul. I'll catch the show tomorrow. Here's some love for the channel. Take care, man. Well, thanks for that, buddy. And enjoy Better Call Saul. Which season are you on? 
That was one of those shows that progressively got better. And slight spoiler, the show's concluded, um, but it instantly got better once his brother died. I'm just, I'm sorry if you didn't get to that point yet. It doesn't matter. But the show instantly just gets better. All right. Enjoy that shit. I love it. One of the best spinoff shows ever made. All right. Tell him to come out of the closet. No, we keep him in the closet. You never know when you're going to need him to pick up a mess. All right. Whatever that means. The next one (laughs) comes from Max Nugenbauer. John Wick 4 was excellent despite a few dumb moments, especially where he kept falling down the stairs. I thought that was a funny gag that was rather enjoyable. And I enjoyed um, the nice throwback going into the third act of The Warriors. These, if you've seen the movie The Warriors, um, essentially a whole bunch of gangs go after one gang uh, trying to make it back home to safety of Coney Island. And they were sort of like a very similar throwback to that. They even played the same music and they had the same uh, vibe and tone in the film with a, a lady DJ saying, hey, all you bebopas, be on the lookout. John Wick's going downtown. Who's going to stop him tonight? You know, it was a little something like that, but I like throwbacks like that. So it was good stuff. I would say John Wick is nearly a three hour movie. And I will say I enjoyed it. I think it's probably the most enjoyable John Wick experience I've had. I would say just the, 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 the fight sequences, the action sequences, the set pieces, didn't feel repetitive to me, unlike the uh, the previous John Wick movies. You know what? I have a review for this shit over on the FlickPix channel. It Go watch it. Check it out. And by the way, speaking of that, I shot that review in three different locations. I shot it in the movie theater. I shot it in a hallway or in the parking lot. And then I shot it in my car. And I actually, that made me enjoy doing movie reviews. That was m- more fun to me and off the cuff. It felt, it felt raw and visceral. You know, I... So I might do more reviews in that style, that format. I know some people, it's unsettling to you um, for some odd reason, but let me know if you like that format. I rather enjoy it. It feels more real to me. You know, I don't know. If you know, let me know. But my point was, could they chop out 10 minutes of the new John Wick movie? Yes, yes, they could. All right, the next one comes from Lewis Harwood. Ooh, that's a good name. You you should work in the adult industry, if you know what I mean. Okay, Lewis Harwood. Um, Hi, John. Always a pleasure seeing you post reviews. I just want to ask if you and Stuckman still talk, thought you two were entertaining. I think we were entertaining, and rarely if ever. Uh, You know, he's doing his thing. He lives in another universe. I live in a different universe 14 light years away. And we haven't quite figured out uh, interdimensional time travel capabilities. There is no black hole to connect anymore, so I can't go through it. And if anything, (laughs) if anything, I'm on the water planet, there's a giant wave coming, and he lives on the ice planet, and he is Matt Damon. You know, that's the way I look at it nowadays. But hopefully one day, a little girl goes to a bookcase... And I I signal to her what conquers all, and it's love. Love conquers all. Just remember that, everyone. That's what Christopher Nolan wanted you to know. All right. Take that. (laughs) Does it? I. That sort of made sense in a roundabout way, but no, very rarely do we talk. Uh, James Dozier says, "Are you excited for Super Mario Bros. movie next week?" I sort of am excited for it. I'm not really excited to hear Chris Pratt talk like an Italian man. Um, hey, it's me, the Mario. Um, but other than that, I am really excited for it. I like that Jack Black's actually doing like a real Bowser voice, not just Jack Black. That's cool. A uh, huge fan of Mario Brothers growing up. I still guess I would say I, I'm still a Mario Brothers fan. Sure. Super Mario World was my life. Nowadays, all the kids have VR. Back then, my VR was Super Mario Brothers. Going to Star World blew my mind. I couldn't quite comprehend it. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. You can beat this game in 12 minutes? Just, I had to learn that shit on my own. I didn't have the internet. 
And somehow I figured it out. I felt like an accomplished young man that day. That was a terrible Mario impression? No, that was my Chris Pratt Mario impression. You get what I'm... That's why I made it bad. All right. (laughs) The next one comes from Charles Taff. Tarantino just turned 60. Yes, he did. Pulp Fiction is still his best, but what do you think about his second best? I'd say Jingo and Chain. Now, I, I know you won't sell your first best, and you might not even sell your second best, but your third best? Huh? Um, I would probably say Jingo is my second favorite, and I could almost objectively say... I, I, I think objectively is the right term. I could say... Is it his second best? Maybe technically not. But for me, it's my it's my favorite Tarantino. I'd say Django's my favorite Tarantino movie. And then Pulp Fiction's kind of like right beside it. And the thing is, I've seen Pulp Fiction so many times. Um, for me, I've always loved the adventure of the time period of Django. And I it, it takes me somewhere else to a happy place. I, that actually sounds really wrong. It takes me back to the 1800s where there's slavery and brutality and that maybe that wasn't the right term to use, but it takes me to a more, well, I guess there's no way to say it. It's a story about retribution. And I love me some Jamie Foxx in that movie. And uh, yeah, I I just love it, man. I love people riding horses and shooting shit. Okay. We'll put it like that. And speaking of riding horses and shooting shit and Quentin, Quentin Tarantino, my third favorite Tarantino, maybe, this could almost be in consideration for my second favorite Tarantino movie is uh, The Hateful Eight. I truly think it's an underrated masterpiece. A lot of people say, oh, I could never watch that again. I've watched that movie probably 25 times, and I enjoy it more and more every time I watch it. And I pick up on little details and nuances I did not see the first time around. So that's a movie that I love to watch on like a, a cold, rainy night. You know, it's just like... It's cozy. It's cozy and violent. That's the best way I can describe The Hateful Eight. Um, also, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That's a movie I've actually enjoyed from uh, one of his movies I've enjoyed the more I watch it. I just like buddy movies. I like when two guys are just like hanging out and doing things. And they're both sort of different. Um, so, yeah, that's what that movie gave me. So, I think I answered your question in there. I actually just watched Pulp Fiction again like last week. All right. And I thought to myself, if I ever if I ever got a dog, I want to name my dog Gimp. As a little nod to Pulp Fiction. All right. The next one comes from Edward Nito. Oh, already answered that one. Once again, thanks, Edward. Akai NG or Akai Nye. We'll just go with Akai. How's it going, man? Good to see you, John. Hope you're well. Did you hear the rumors of Oppenheimer might be three hours long? Personally, I don't mind. Can't wait for more Nolan. Well, yes, I did hear it could be three hours long. And coming from Nolan, I don't think that's far-fetched whatsoever. I mean, we just got a three-hour John Wick movie. Is it so crazy to think we get a three-hour movie about the creation of the atomic bomb? I would say probably not, right? Um, so yeah, uh, give me that. If he has a story to tell, I'll be there for three hours. Hopefully, I can watch an IMAX, and I'm curious to see how like the format of that movie goes. I here's what I'm imagining. Can I put these on as I talk to you guys? Do you mind this? Do you mind this? Is this okay? Okay. Um, I'm Nolan doesn't really tell a linear story. He loves his flashback sequences uh, leading up to the uh, current events. You know, uh, so. I'm almost imagining the movie, and I could be wrong. This is a theory, and maybe if I'm right, I'll go back to this and utilize this clip I'm about to say. I have a feeling the movie's going to open up with the planes flying over Japan, and they're probably maybe going to release the bombs, and then, or they're about to release them, you know? And then we cut back months or years previously to to the creation and the development. And throughout that, we keep getting a a flash forward of the planes getting closer and closer to, uh, was it Hiroshima and uh, Hiroshima? Am I Hiroshima and 
Or is it Nagasaki? I don't know. Um, Hiro- Hiroshima, right? That was one of the cities that was bombed. Uh, so I, I feel like that's the way that stories are going to be tell, told. And at the conclusion, we see the big disaster go down. And hopefully he truly highlights the human tragedy that went into that. Because we did incinerate hundreds of thousands of people with a bomb. Innocent people. Children. Men. Women. Just living their life. They didn't want any part in that war. They were just civilians standing by. We just blew them the fuck up. And then we and then people who didn't instantly die, enjoy your radiation poison. Bye-bye. Like, don't forget, like, we did some sinister shit. So anyway, I'm really looking forward to the three-hour movie. Next question. I'm sorry it got dark there, but I had to get real with you. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Okay, see, I got it right. I got a B plus in history class. Uh, Edward Nito says, oh, I've seen up to the end of season three of Better Call Saul. I agree. His brother was awful, Tim. Yeah, his brother was one of the most unlikable characters in all of human existence. Him and Skyler from Breaking Bad. You have to have, when you when you have a Breaking Bad series or a Breaking Bad spinoff series, you have to have one annoying character that you just want to just grab by the neck and squeeze till they go limp. And those are both of those characters. So yes. Yes. Gilliam LaBelle. Thank you. Hiroshima. You said Hiroshima. But I think I can't see with these glasses on. I'm sorry. Uh, The next one comes from Dustin Rich. Would you rather make out with your old boss uh, from Pizza or make an hour-long video talking about how you wish you were Austin Butler? Oh, probably. You know, honestly, I, why would I not want to be Austin Butler? I mean, yeah, he's a pretentious 20-something year in Hollywood who's still talking like Elvis Presley for some odd reason because he's he was so lost in the role. He's a method actor. Um I'd probably rather be Austin Butler, right, man? <laughs> like, or, or I would rather talk about how I want to be Austin Butler. He's a good-looking dude. He's rich. He's famous. I would, I'd rather talk about that than even close my eyes and think about my former manager at Pizza Hut whose face just utterly disgusts me and gives me nightmares. Ugh. Like, her face reminded me of an old piece of pepperoni pizza if you threw it into a dumpster and left it there for months And it went through the rain, the wind, the weather, mildew grew on it, cockroaches crawled around it, bugs and maggots started eating it. That's what I think about when I think about my former manager at Pizza Hut. And I hope she's in a lot of agonizing pain right now. And if you're watching, well, I hope you're not. Because I hope you... (laughs) Never mind. Let's go to the next question. Doshi Gaming says... (laughs) uh, Are you... Are you still a gamer? Would you buy Resident Evil 4 Remake? RE4 Remake? Is that what that means? I only play Rocket League right now. I've been playing a shit ton of it. Maybe a little bit too much of it. I had to buy a new controller because the last one... Well, let's just say it um, It took a beating. I just... I get, too in, I get too into it, man. I get too intense. But um, yeah, that's really all I'm playing. I don't even play Call of Duty anymore. I just couldn't take it anymore. It was just too much effort. I'm like, I can't keep up with the new generation of gamers nowadays. Like, there are people who dedicate 24 hours of their life every day to video games. And I just don't have it in me. Like, I think that almost the best thing for me would have unplug it from the internet and just play campaign mode at this point. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't really game much other than Rocket League currently. The next one comes from Jack. How's it going, Jack? Hey, John. How do we go about meeting you in Orlando this weekend? So, once again, if you go to my Twitter or Facebook, click the uh, the post on there. All the info is under there. If you go to the, the actual thread, all the times, dates, everywhere you need to be. Um, check out my buddy Sean Chandler's uh, Twitter account. Um, who's pretty much handling all the details. Uh, but yeah, pretty much, I, I, I should have put it in front of me. I'm too stupid to do that. But I did have the logo earlier. Um, so Friday, it'll be Friday afternoon. Uh, and then there's Saturday 
and then Saturday afternoon, and then there's like another panel. We're doing a total of four panels. Um, so I'll be there, man. And, uh, so check out the panels. Uh, we'll be doing meet and greets. I'll be walking around the floor for a little bit. Uh, so yeah, man, uh, there's going to be multiple opportunities. And the cool thing is after the panels are over, uh, we're going to have like a, a little table I've heard on the side of the stage for meet and greets. So that'll make it way easier. Uh, so yeah, just, just scream, just scream my name and I'll find you. But yeah, if you're going, please, are you guys going? Let me know in the comments right now. Are you guys going to Megacon in Orlando this weekend? Let me know. Uh, Brett A. says, I'm from Akron, Ohio. I love Cleveland, even though it gets a bad rep. What are your thoughts on the city overall? Cleveland is a cool looking city, actually. Um, every time I look at the skyline and the the urban decay and the sort of like rust belt of it I'm like this would look cool as a backdrop for a movie and I know they shot some films in Cleveland actually they shot uh, a scene in the first Avengers film in Cleveland as a city it's okay um but the thing is when we were downtown at the convention center we walked like four blocks each way to look for a place to eat and everything was closed like Every restaurant was closed, not open for some odd reason. It's like, it's the weekend. You think you would be open. Um, so it's, in that sense, not the greatest. Um, but yeah, Cleveland's okay. I used to live in Akron. I actually used to live in Stowe, Ohio, which is like 20 minutes north of Akron, where you live. And there wasn't much in Stowe, Ohio. So. All right. Why are you going to Orlando? You missed the first part of the, the stream, didn't you? Uh, we're going to do like four panels. We're going to be talking about movies, talking about starting a YouTube channel, uh, doing like a movie talk discussion, a few other panels. Uh, so yeah, a multitude of panels pretty much. All right, the next one comes from... Sorry, it's... Catch up here. Okay, here we go. Anthony Favetta says, what would you like to see in Baby Driver 2? Um, I would like to see like better music played, like more epic metal music or something, some Metallica or that, something that just gets me on the edge of my seat. And I know his character wasn't into music like that. He was listening to like happy music that his mother made for him on mixtapes or something. But I want some like hard ass, kick ass metal music when he's driving around. And I want him to pick cooler, better vehicles to get away in. That's what I want from Baby Driver. Um, and also, I don't want a forced love romance story that I don't give a shit in the third act of the film. Those are a few things I would like. Is there a Baby Driver 2 in production I didn't know about? Let me know. All right, the next one comes from Murph. Does Stuckman walk weird in real life or only while acting? I would say both. I would say both. When you're eight feet tall, you kind of wobble when you walk, I guess. I don't know. It's just the legs. They don't. It's like uh, it's like two breadsticks. The next one comes from VCC says, Puss in Boots 2 was amazing. Where's your review? I haven't watched Puss in Boots, and I've heard great things. It's just one of the... Let me keep it real with you guys. I'm 35 years old, and it's not that I don't enjoy animation. I love me a good animated film. Every once in a while, to find my happy place, I go back and watch Aladdin from 1992. I love that shit. I still love Toy Story, but there's just something about watching a Puss in Boots movie. No matter how good it is, it's still Puss in Boots. You know, it's not Shrek, it's Puss in Boots. It's a little cat in a pair of boots. And I get that it has like a charming, great story, and I've heard nothing but great things once again. I just, it's hard for me on like a, a Friday night to go, that's what I want to watch, Puss in Boots. You know, I don't know. Oh, we got Sean Chandler in here. How's it going, man? Cleveland was an amazing pizza place. Oh, Cleveland, <laughs> oh God, whoa. Cleveland has an amazing pizza place in downtown. Yes. Would you guys like to hear the story about the time we almost ate pizza and died? Well, 
We didn't. Here's the story. We were looking desperately for a place to eat. Sean did not bring a jacket. It was a cold, windy day, so he's miserable, and every place we walk up to is closed. So after about seven miles of walking through downtown Cleveland, we stumble across a little pizza parlor, which from the outside looks nice, right? A little hole in the wall, mom and pop pizza place? Absolutely. But we walk in, and that's where the problems start. I look across, and I see the pizza that they're presenting. They have three different kinds of pizza. Gross, super gross, and you're definitely going to get food poison and puke out of your asshole if you eat this pizza. And they, it all looks gray. And the two guys sitting behind the counter just really didn't look like they cared. Like, th- th- that pizza was made yesterday, and it's been sitting there since then. So I looked at it, I looked at everyone else, and I just thought to myself, you guys can eat this if you want, but I'm not. <laughs> And then we turned around and left. So that's our pizza experience in Cleveland, Ohio. So you're welcome, Sean. I saved your life. The the next one comes from uh, the Nicka Doug Express. Okay, here we go. Hey, John, I need real advice. I've lived in Cali for 24 years. I know I now have the option of moving to Tennessee. Is moving the better option or staying put? If you want my real real advice, now I don't know what you do for a living, but if that's not really an, an issue, yes, instantly move. Tennessee is a nice well, there was actually a a little incident there this week, wasn't there? But other than that, nice scenery, overall nice people, salt of the earth people. You have a few major cities. If I would recommend moving towards like the Nashville area, but not in Nashville, like the outskirts. There's actually some really nice neighborhoods. I've been to Nashville mul- multiple times and I would move there, man. They got better scenery. It's a cheaper cost to living. Um, you got more variations in weather. I would move there to Tennessee if I w- were you. Um me personally, I would definitely move to Tennessee. Gilliam LaBelle says, <laughs> uh, John Wick 4 has some of the best action sequences I've ever seen. Just pure insanity in all the best ways. Donnie Yen is a boss. Absolutely, man. The thing I kept thinking of when I was watching the new John Wick movie was if they ever make a final fight movie, right? If you play the video game final fight, which is a beat em up side scroller video game, which I love, which is actually back there on that uh, arcade cabinet. If they can make a movie, but in the John wick style, that would be one of the coolest action movies ever made. And hear me out. It's very similar in tone because if you take John wick at the basic core of what it is, it's one big action set piece in a different environment location And then the next scene is the same thing duplicated once again. And it's slightly different, different location, different henchmen to beat up. And there's always sort of like a big boss fight. And that's exactly the gameplay of Final Fight. So if they could do that in John Wick style, I think you'd have a really cool action movie. And I know Hollywood's listening right now. That's my million million dollar idea for you guys watching. So I expect 10%. All right. The next one comes from Carter Lovejoy. How's it going, Carter Lovejoy, man? Carter Lovejoy always sends me messages on Snapchat. John, when is the next live show? And I always have to say, I don't know. <laughs> I, I really don't know. Um, but here it goes, man. Any new pickups from this past month? Some of my recent pickups this month were Babylon 4K, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish 4K, Training Day 4K, and The Whale Blu-ray. I would like to probably get The Whale Blu-ray at some point. Training Day 4K, definitely a must-own. Babylon, probably not. Um, I showed a few 4Ks in my last live show. I got... Um, I forgot. <laughs> I got something on 4K. Uh, what did I get? Uh... Air Force One and something else on 4K. And my brain cannot recall what those movies were. But yes, I have a few new movies on 4K. They're part of a new Flick Trip video. I'm, I'm hoping to get that out soon. I think I said that last time, but I'm st- like there was one thing I needed to end it. I needed like a 
an ending to the video, and I have that now, so... There's a few new movies in there. I'll tell you one of them. I finally picked up Waterworld on 4K because I want to watch Kevin Costner drink his own urine in 4K glory. There you go. Paper. Have you ever seen paper? Love that shit, man. Give it to me now. Uh, Eric Carter says, a Final Fight movie is being worked on by the same production company that made John Wick. You're in luck, John. Is that real? Is that a real thing? If you're lying to me, I hate you. But if that's real, okay. I did not know that before I said that. Uh, John, thoughts on the new TMNT trailer and style? I know it's like Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse style. And it works for Spider-Verse, but I don't want to see that become like a common thing for anime animation movies. Also, I hate the style of the Ninja Turtles. I hate it. I hate it. There, I said it. I hate it. It doesn't look like the TMNT I grew up with. It doesn't look... It doesn't even look... It looks too childish. And I know that's crazy to say when you're talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in an animation movie. But at least have a little bit of adult undertone in there that people who love the original 90, 90s movie can enjoy. And that that's completely lacking in the in the new animation movie. It looks like this was made for the the kids who grew up with the Nickelodeon version of Ninja Turtles. That whatever that was, that crappy looking CG thing that they had out that I never watched. But um, yeah, I don't like the I don't like the style of the Ninja Turtles, man. And I get that they're supposed to be super young teenagers this time around, but. Call me crazy, but I want to see them being slightly older teenagers, not watching like 11 year old kids hang out. Like they all come across like Dustin from Stranger Things. I don't know. All right, the next one comes from. Oh, someone said the training day 4K looks good. That's good to know. That's good to know. Uh, VCC says thoughts on Jonathan Majors and the MCU going forward. Well, King definitely is a villain, huh? I, I don't know all the details. Uh, did he push or shove someone? I don't know the details. Who knows if he got in some kind of altercation and put his hand on someone's shoulder and they're claiming he hit them. I don't know the details. Um, all I can do is say like, if I was a celebrity, I would just live in a little bubble and in a straight jacket or wear or I would wear a GoPro camera on my on my head at all times. If someone said something I didn't do it, I'd be like, oh no, here it is, man. I'm gonna post this shit on Twitter. There you go. See? I didn't do it. I don't know the details. Um it's just for me, when it comes to celebrities and their drama in real life, I sort of just separate it and cut it off from the art that they make typically. Now I'm not sometimes <laughs> Sometimes these celebrities do unspeakable bad shit to people. All right. Talking to you, Kevin Spacey, Um, because he typically watches these these live shows. Um, But beyond that, I, I can I separate the two things. So I don't know what he did, but I have a feeling Marvel is they're going to be at a crossroads right now, depending on how the outcome of that goes. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. It seems like they have a lot of plans in the works. So what do you do? Um, We'll have to see how that turns out. Q reviews. By the way, thanks for the very generous super chat. Um, What's up, John? I really wanted to see you in Cleveland. Well, why didn't you? Um, But that's okay. I forgive you just this once. What is the Mandalorian season three about? Love the honesty of your channel. Well, thanks, man. Thank you for that. Yeah, I, if you, that's all I have anymore is honesty to give you. <laughs> that's all I have. Um, and a few shitty, witty one liners every once in a while. Other than that, that's it. That's all I got. So I don't know what Mandalorian season three is about. They went a few places, they wasted a lot of time in doing so. The first episode, he talked about getting a droid that he was really adamant on. And then everyone else just went, you don't need that. Here, take this shitty droid. And he went, 
oh, okay, I'll do that. It, like he, the Mandalorian in, in season three is sort of coming across as incompetent. Like I remember the the one episode with uh, Katie Zakoff, where <laughs> he like just. He needed saved, so she saves him, and then he instantly gets himself into another, like, dangerous situation eight seconds later without even the the cognitive thought of, should I do this? He just does it, and she had to save him again. Literally, she had to save him two times in 12 seconds. And it makes me look at the Mandalorian and go, this is, like, really bad writing for his character, like... He can't even protect himself. Why is he like the guardian of Goku or not Goku? What's the little baby Yoda name? Gogu? Goku. It's Goku, right? That sounds really wrong. Why does that sound wrong? Grogu. It's Grogu. I'm sorry. I'm going to punish myself now to all you anime fans out there. I hope that was enough. Um... Well, yeah, we'll just call him baby little man, baby little green Mando. That's what we'll call him. All right. The next one comes from cult creations, dioramas. Do you make dioramas? Are they pretty good? What do you got, man? I'm always looking at cool dioramas on Etsy every once in a while. Some cool stuff going on there, but all right, here we go. Hi, John Glenn from England here. Please tell me why they have destroyed DC films the way they have just terrible. Batman v Superman Ultimate Edition was my favorite. There were a few glimmering hopes throughout DC's attempts to make a quality film. They never quite did it, um, especially in the shared universe. Now, did I enjoy Todd Phillips' Joker? Yes, absolutely. But when it came to the shared universe of Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman, Man of Steel was great. Great starting point. I actually just recently showed my girlfriend that movie and she enjoyed it. I was like, doesn't this feel like a real movie? Like we watched that movie or she watched it for the first time. And I was like, compare that to the new Marvel movies of like Thor, Love and Thunder and Quantum Mania. And I was like, doesn't this just feel like a real movie? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, see, they they had a good starting point there. And I will, I, I would be... I'm going to go out on a limb here and just say, I feel like if DC had made Man of Steel like two years ago, if that movie came out two years ago, I think it would have had a newfound appreciation that it didn't get 12 years ago when it originally came out in 2013. I'm just saying, I think it was a little bit ahead of its time. Like people weren't quite ready for that. Now, I think Batman v Superman was one of the biggest letdowns of my entire life uh, because when I found out there was going to be a Batman v Superman movie, oh my God, like I, I literally Im- I imploded inside of myself. I started bleeding through my pores with excitement. And then you watch it and you, you keep thinking to yourself, oh, please get better. Oh, oh no, Jesse Eisenberg, do not put that Jolly Rancher in that other man's mouth. Don't. Oh, he did it. He did it. So he had a few glimmers of hope throughout the film, like the Batman warehouse scene. If only they could have just done that for two and a half hours, but it's four minutes. So yeah, it was just a complete mess, man. It was a mess. I know some people like the first Wonder Woman movie. It's, it's good. It's okay. Um, but man, just a tonal, it, it, no one had an idea of where they wanted to start and where they wanted to go. That's the problem. And Disney had the same pro- problem with Star Wars. They just made that shit up as they went. So hopefully starting fresh with James Gunn, it corrects the course that was completely wrong. Uh. Okay, let's go to the next one. Taylor Goodwin says, say I'm going to need... A- a gun in your Keanu voice. I mean, I need a, I don't know. That sounds really dumb. I'm thinking I'm back. I, there was one line. Actually, I can't remember how he said it in John wick four. I can't remember the line. It was just, he had have done that line seven times to get it as bad as he did. Like accidentally, he could have gave a better line delivery than he did. And I get the shtick of Keanu Reeves having like a very stilted acting style, but man, when he's doing his John Wick, 
it's almost like watching a guy who's learning to talk for the first time. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Like, like Jesus, did he just have a stroke on screen? But I love the guy, and he's the only guy in Hollywood who could get away with that. But great stuff. The next one comes from uh, Mike's Movie Talk. Thoughts on AI. Also, Hateful Eight is the best. I agree, man. Yeah. Uh, AI is getting scary to me. It's truly terrifying me uh, to my core, and it's going to get to the point. And I'm telling you guys right now, it's going to get to the point where you can just have a CGI talking person on screen, right? You type in what you want that person to look like, like you're playing Sims. You build a person. And then you say, okay, I want this person to talk about movies and this is the title and this is the topic and you push enter. And then five minutes later, it processes and shits out an AI generated person who gives you a review of a movie that it made up just simply by typing in John Wick. Now you have a 10 minute John Wick review from a CGI person on screen. And then you can go so far as to maybe pick the voice. If you wanted to, you wanted to sound like Nicolas Cage, for example. Oh, I'll click Nicolas Cage's voice. And now I have this review. That's terrifying. That if AI is getting to a point where it's going to take everyone's jobs, it could take my job. It could take your job. If you write anything, if you like it, it's scary what it's capable of doing. And I was thinking to myself the other day, I wish technology would stop. Not, Not only do I think technology should stop. I wish it would go back to how it was in like 2015, like stop at 2015. We were good. I had everything I needed. Nothing. I didn't need anything else. So yeah, it's terrifying. All right. Then (laughs) the next one comes from Upshot Music TV. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. The terror equals master and commander. The terror equals master and commander plus Game of Thrones. What is this? The terror is it's as good as master and commander in Game of Thrones. That's a big claim to make. Okay, let's continue here. All I ask is you watch the trailer and read the comments. Underrated masterpiece. The terror. Okay, I'll watch it, man. I'll watch it. I'm going to trust you. But if you're lying to me, I will never trust you again. I'll check it out, man. Someone said Eternals <laughs> is in the top three MCU. Yeah, top three worst movies ever made. Uh, <laughs> the next one comes from Seth Hall. How's it going, Seth? Do you believe Marvel can correct its course? If Guardians 3 sucks, I may jump ship. It's just getting harder and harder to get excited with each installment lately. Well, you have to understand, we are on the JV squad of Marvel, right? All the key players, everyone you cared about, everyone's origin story that mattered, Tony Stark, Steve Rogers, they're gone. The the heart and the pulse of the MCU does not exist anymore. And now what we have is all these supporting characters who kind of feel one-dimensional, And keep in mind, they are supporting characters. The majority of them started off as supporting characters, and now they're trying to be the main focal point of the MCU, and it's just not really working. Uh, And I think once Hemsworth leaves, you really don't have much left. So, yeah, um, I'm I'm at a point where I'm just like, you know what? Just give us the X-Men, like... I don't care about this shit over here. Just let's start fresh with the X-Men. It's something new, something different. And we can we can have a whole nother experience like we originally got with the first Iron Man and, and all those great movies. We can have it with the X-Men movies. And that's what I'm looking forward to. Observing, and by the way, thanks for the question, man. Uh, observing the Apocalypse says, if you ran the DCEU, even though it's called like the DCU now or something, uh, what would your film, what would John, if you could read, what would you say when you read this sentence? Uh, what would my film plans be? If I ran the DCEU, I would just burn it all down to the ground 
and I would start fresh like James Gunn's doing. I would literally just start fresh. Now, my first movie, I'm not sure what it would be, but I some of the ideas Gunn, James Gunn presented uh, a month or two ago were interesting. I, I, I thought his Supergirl or Superwoman, whatever they're calling her nowadays, Super Lady, I thought the idea of her story sounded really interesting. And the thing that caught me with that was she's actually a very jaded character where Superman is sort of this boy scout who grew up on earth with a loving family, Supergirl or Superwoman or whatever they're calling her, um, grew up on the, the ruins of Krypton in a desolated wasteland. And she only knows despair and, and anger. And I like that. I think that's interesting. Also, the new Batman movie coming out where Batman has a son, Damon Wayne. That gets me excited. That's something new and fresh that we haven't quite seen. I mean, the the last closest representation of something we've had of that was George Clooney hanging out with Chris O'Donnell. And I think there's room for improvement. But I do hope, hope Mr. Freeze comes back at some point. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's a few good ideas. Now, what would I do? I would probably just start with a Superman movie. I would set the tone with Superman once again. I would make sure to get it right the first time around. Um, and then I'd go from there. But the ideas they have sound pretty good. So I don't really have a lot of complaints thus far. But they're making all kinds of weird stuff over at DC. Like they're going to make a Swamp Thing movie and some other movies of characters I've never heard of and no one else has heard of. So I'm curious if those actually do in fact come out or just turn into TV shows. All right. The next one comes from uh, Rod Thunderheart. Great name. I always remember you, Thunderheart, and I always will. If I sent my book, would you read it, possibly review it? You want me to read your book? and re- I don't do book reviews, man. Unfortunately, I don't. Um, what is it about? I'm not going to lie to you. Just because you send me a book that you wrote doesn't mean I'm going to be super interested in reading it. No offense to you, man, but um, it depends on the genre and the story. And a book is a lot of dedication. It's not like I can. It's not like a short film that you made where I can kind of click it on as I'm taking a crap for 10 minutes. This is like five hours of my life. And sometimes I like to reread things multiple times. So can you give me, why don't you DM me on Twitter and send me the synopsis of your book? Or if you have a digital version of your book, send me a link to it or something on Twitter as a DM. Does that work, man? Um, Terrence Hanna says never watching the dark Knight trilogy ever again, or having to drink pigeon late. Oh my God. Okay. This was a what if question. Okay. You, you didn't start that way. So here it goes. John, I'll, I'm filling in the gaps here. John, would you never watch the dark Knight trilogy ever again? Or would you rather drink the pigeon ladies bath water or have to drink the pigeon ladies bath water? Okay. I'm sorry, Christopher Nolan. I'm not, I've seen those movies so many times. They're ingrained in my memory. I will forever cherish them, but I will not drink a sip of the pigeon ladies crusty bath water. First of all, there's going to be pigeon feces in there for a fact. And that's deadly. There's toxins in there that will kill me. So no, I can't do it. That's like drinking battery acid. I will die. So I, yeah, I can't, I'm sorry. I can't watch the bat. I, I can't watch no one's trilogy anymore. I'll have to watch Schumacher's Batman movies. I guess I could just watch Tim Burton's. That'd probably be slightly better. Um, but yeah, man, sorry. Oh God. Just when you said that, it made me want to go like rinse my mouth out with Listerine and scrub my, my body. Oh, could you imagine what that tastes like? Let's go to the next question. Uh, Michael Entity Entity says, How could anybody hate Rocky IV? It cured my cancer. I don't know how anyone could. You don't, you just don't like, you don't have a heart. You don't have a heart and you never wanted to fill the, 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 pulse pounding testosterone fueled 
movie known as Rocky IV, which is 90% montage scenes, but that's okay because they're backed by amazing rock ballads. I love me some Rocky IV, man. Guilty pleasure movie, but... Basically, that movie was an excuse just to make a Rocky movie without having much of a story to tell, and I'm okay with that. But oddly enough, in that movie, we get one of the biggest story turns of all time in the Rocky franchise where Apollo Creed is murdered. And I've heard multiple times they say, yeah, if we could go back, we probably wouldn't have done that. But Rocky needed motivation this time to box once again. He needed a reason to go box in Russia on Christmas Day, and the death of his friend got him there. How do you bring back a dead friend? You win a boxing match in Russia. Keep that in mind, everyone. Keep that in mind. Here we go. Claudio Rogajan. How's it going, buddy? All right. I have to ask, how did you like Scott Atkins and John Wick 4 as Killa the Big Fat Man? I thought he was hilarious and he was acting circles around Keanu. Laugh aloud. Yes, I didn't know who that was at first. I was trying to place it. And that fat suit they put on him was phenomenal. Um, Clearly, it was a fat suit because the way the man was moving just broke all laws and physics, but I loved it. I thought it was great. And his character reminded me once again, going back to like a video game, like final fight, excuse me, his character reminded me of like the boss that you end up fighting at the end of a video game level. That's exactly what he looked like. And I loved it. Yeah. Great, great ending to that scene too. Scott Adkins. I, I remember a long time ago, there was a campaign to make him Batman. He kind of looks the part, but I don't know. If, I don't know. Then we got Ben Affleck. Thanks for the question, Claudio. Uh, Gabe K says, hey, John, apologies if this has been asked already. Well, I, I will forgive you beforehand. Here we go. But did you ever get around to seeing David Lynch's The Straight Story What's a movie you like the most people haven't seen? Great question, Gabe. And I did watch The Straight Story. It took me, I think, four days. And it's a very slow story. And that's fine by me. I don't mind a slow story. But it was a little more simple than I thought it would be. And David Lynch, I know people love David Lynch. I think he's... I think he's a good director. But he's not exactly the type of director I enjoy watching his work often. Um, He has this way. He has this weird surreal. He has like a surrealism of his movies, I guess you could say, where he almost makes the performances bad. Like he likes bad performances from good actors. And maybe you're not going to agree with this, but he has this way of making an actor's performance look cheap. I I know that sounds odd, but in the straight story, yes, I enjoyed watching a man ride a lawnmower down the highway and meet people along the way. And that's pretty much what the movie is. It's very simple. And I did enjoy it overall. I, I don't think I could ever revisit it again, but it was a solid movie and I was surprised I never came across it. Someone said David Lynch is the greatest director of all time. I think it's one of those things you just like him or you don't. I don't know. All right. Yeah, some people like him. I don't know. I just, his, something about his films just, he intentionally makes them seem odd. And I can't quite place my finger on it. He just has a weird way of like showcasing his actors and his scenes and his story to where it feels like, I, I can't I can't really place it. I, I'd have to watch I'd have to watch another David Lynch movie to figure it out. Alright, the next one comes from Oh, and a movie I'd recommend. I always say one movie I love that very few people have watched, oddly enough, is Master and Commander. I, that's my always go to recommendation for a movie you probably haven't seen, but you should, and you'll definitely like it. That's my recommendation. <clears throat> 
Uh, the next one comes from Kevin Diaz. Have you given Spartacus a chance yet? I know it was brought up in a previous live stream. Damn good show. Well worth the watch. I have not got around to watching it yet, man. I just, I don't know when I would, to be honest with you. I don't know when. Um, w- there was a show I was watching or started to watch. I've been watching the A&E biography series on WWE wrestlers. I've been watching that every week. I like that. <laughs> um, also, I was watching this show. Uh, it's called, uh, what is it called? Is it called a live it's a survival show in the wilderness where the people are left alone and the last one to, to stay in the wilderness and, and fend for themselves and build a shelter and kill fish and eat them wins $500,000. And I love that shit. I would love to be on that show. Do I have any survival skills? No, I do not. But I would love to be on that show. You could just watch me crying alone in like a tarp in the woods. Pretty much like what you're doing right now, except we're not in the woods. Uh, the next one comes from Charles Taff. What was the best movie of the 80s? I have to go with Raiders of the Lost Ark. Dude, the 80s was... That's one of those things where I would have to sit here and talk about it for seven hours to even come to some kind of a conclusion. And the closest conclusion I'm going to come to is probably a top 10. I mean, you have Predator. You have Over the Top, you have RoboCop, you have The Goonies, you have Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, you have Ferris Bueller's Day Off, you have John Hughes movies, you have The Breakfast Club, Jesus, you have Terminator, you have Aliens, oh my god, you have The Abyss, where do you even, Back to the Future, Jesus, so, that's a good pick, man, it's not a bad pick, but I don't think it would be my pick. I don't know if it'd be my pick. Kubrick is God, Lynch is Jesus. And Michael Bay is Satan himself. (laughs) Uh, The the next one comes from uh, the 50% Doctor Who podcast. Regarding a shoey, you down a beer from your shoe. Oh, that sounds like a something they would do in like Ireland or something. Drinking alcohol out of a, an old shoe. Did that sound that was that wrong of me to say? I don't know. Um but I would do it if I were in Ireland. I would like to drink I would like to drink the um whatever's on tap from this old man's shoe sitting at the bar. That's when you know you get the the full experience. Someone said Empire is overrated. Come at me. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know if you could say it's overrated. All right. The next one comes from Fidel Reyes. John, what's the best rainy day movie? Oh, it depends. You got to give me a genre. What genre are you in the mood for? I can't narrow this down for you, but I will. It's called Troy starring Brad Pitt. You sack of wine, and you will watch it on a rainy day, and I'll tell you why. Because it's a happy, bright movie that takes place on the sandy beaches of Troy. But what actually happens on those sandy beaches of Troy? Blood and brutality. And it's beautiful. Um, but yeah, if you want something a little happy, more happy-go-lucky, you got to give me a genre that you're in the mood for. Have you seen Blue Velvet? Not yet, man. Not yet. It's on the, it's on the uh, to-do list. I said over the top in the 1980s. Well, that's just the best movie ever made. I mean, you can't just cram into into the 1980s, you know. Uh, Brett A. says, is Austin Burke as nice as he seems? Yes, he is one of the nicest guys I've ever met in my life and very easy to get along with. And the more we hung out, the more I, I think we became better friends um up until hanging like we slept in the same room together at one point where we were going to sleep in the same bed um but we did get two beds 
And uh, yeah, so, <laughs> so yeah, good good guy, man. No complaints. Easy to get along with. Very relatable, smart guy. Can talk movies, can talk life. And it's, uh, yeah, super nice. He did, though, however, he brought a sound machine with him to the hotel room. And as we're laying down to go to sleep after a long day, he's playing all the different sounds that the sound machine can make. And it goes from bird sounds to whale sounds to what sounds like fighter plane shooting. And one of the sounds sounded like a home invasion taking place where you heard a front door being kicked in and like someone being taken, taken advantage of. And I'm like, you sleep with that at night? I don't know. What, what's going on here? Then I questioned everything I knew about him. But then we both agreed to settle on the, uh, the fan noise, which was truly relaxing and took me to a magical place when I closed my eyes. So yeah, nice guy. The next one comes from Collie Wally. I binge watched all the Scream sequels this last week, and the fourth film is by far my favorite. Which one would you choose? Oh, by far the first movie. By far. I mean, light years and leaps and bounds. By far the first is the best and the one that feels like a real movie to me. Now, I did go back recently and and revisit the second movie. And it's been a long time since, since I've seen it. And I do like, I think, from a directorial, like a, a, a cinematography and, and, and story standpoint and the way it's crafted, I, I think it's a solid sequel to the first Scream movie. But the issue with the second Scream movie was I felt like the killers were telegraphed a little too obviously like they kind they, they copy and pasted the formula and the, the killers this time around, it's like, if you couldn't guess who the killers were with, within the first seven minutes of the movie, it's like, okay, how, how could you not know if you've seen the first movie? So I was hoping for, I, and I've seen it originally, but rewatching it again, I was like, Oh my God, this is blatantly obvious. Uh, I think that's the biggest detriment to that movie, but it, it's nice to see Jada Pickett Smith, uh, brutally murdered in a in a theater in the opening scene. I will just say that. Great scene. Just great. Next one comes from Michael Witherspoon. Hot take. The Mandalorian season three is boring. No, that's an honest take. It's fuck it's going no it's gone nowhere. Now I know what they're going to do, right? This will eventually tie into like two good episodes. They'll conclude this season with two good episodes. I'm just telling you, they will have a solid season finale of this this series or this season. I have faith in that. But leading up to it, oh yeah, it's it's really boring. And that one episode where we, we had to go to Coruscant and watch a guy like eat his lunch and go to work and then have some like minor conflict with himself and then everything that happened in that episode was like obviously going to happen you could tell it was going to happen 10 minutes into the episode but we still had to watch it for 50 minutes and go yeah we knew that was going to happen thank you for wasting our time all right um yeah i don't know what they're doing what's today tuesday the new episode comes out tomorrow right or tonight if i stay up late enough it comes out tonight right uh the next one comes from MKF30. And by the way, guys, I'm about 18 18 minutes behind. And uh, I'll catch up very soon, though. Who gets too much hate? Michael Bay or Zack Snyder? Too much hate? I think most of Michael Bay's hate recently, he's earned. I really do. I really do. Now, to say Michael Bay is a terrible director, he hasn't always been a bad director. What he's done in some films worked perfectly for those films. But lately, it's I think he's lost his mind. Zack Snyder's very hit or miss. Sometimes I feel like when you give Zack Snyder a little too much creative control, he gets a little too indulgent. Um, but if I was going to direct a film, I would probably feel more confident in having Zack Snyder direct the film than I would Michael Bay. Uh, but really, to be honest with you, I... I wouldn't want either of them to direct a movie Um, like they could be handle the cinematography or or something along those lines. Uh, But yeah, I don't know. I've I've sort of fallen out of love with both of them in in recent years. Uh, Charles Taft says three best Spielberg movies, Jaws, 
Raiders Last Crusade. Well, from an objective standpoint, I would put Jaws in there. Absolutely. I'd probably put Jaws, Jurassic Park, and... I mean, if you want to get serious, you got to put like Schindler's List in there, I guess. Uh, but for me... For me, my personal favorites have always been Catch Me If You Can. Uh, I was going to say Last Crusade, but maybe not. I got to put Hook on there. I love me some Hook, man. And I know like the critic in me, from an objective standpoint, from a subjective standpoint, should say Hook is probably not his best work. But for me, I love it. Uh, and then I guess third... I never loved E.T. I like it. I respect it. But I've never loved it. Probably Jurassic Park. I, I would say those would be my three. I'm going to go with those three. Uh, Cody Gill says, Thank you for putting 13 lives in your top 10. Absolutely, man. I watched that movie the day before I was finished editing. I finished editing my top 10 of the year. And I was watching that on the edge of my seat. And the fact that that actually happened blew my mind. The way they were dealing with evacuating those kids stuck in a cave for 20 plus days. And the intensity of just like putting yourself in that situation when you watch that movie. And imagine going through a cave system, right? And you only have so much oxygen in your tank to get through. You can't go up. You can't go down. There's no escape. You just have to go through. That's terrifying. That was like one of my fears being unlocked watching that movie. And I, I loved it. It was one of the best home experiences I've had a watch, of watching a movie in a very long time. So, yeah. I, more people need to watch 13 Lives. Go watch it right now. Just stop looking at my stupid face. Go watch that. The next one comes from Kevin Diaz. Watch it. You like time period stuff. This is it. Other than that, do you love the live streams? Oh, okay. There's a lot of, okay. A lot of different things in there. I'll check it out, man. I love it. I love a good time period thing. I'm going to check it out. I'm going to check it out. I promise. And thank you for loving the live streams. Thank you for that. I'll see if I can do a live stream in, um, Orlando this weekend. I'll see if I can get Austin or Sean or uh, somebody else in there. Um, I'll try to do one this weekend. I'm probably going to have to do it on my phone, which will look kind of crappy. But if you guys want to see that, let me know. Or if you want to give the video a like, by that'll let me know too. Or you could just give the video a like. All right, the next one comes from Matthew Castellonis. Thoughts on The Last of Us Season 1 and excited for Season 2. Personally, I am not, and I'll wait on the reviews. Oh, man, that was a good show. Solid show. Definitely a few episodes that were better than others, for sure. But overall, I was happy with it. It was well made. It felt like real people. It felt like they were focusing on the right things. Um, and from what I know about the game, I feel like it was solid. Um and I thought it got better as it progressed. I really do. I think the the longer that, that season one went on, I thought it got better. Um, I liked the characters. I thought they had good arcs. Um, some of the flashback episodes were great. Though I think upon rewatch, there might be a few episodes I skip. And don't get me wrong, like the one episode with Bill, for example. I liked that episode. I really did. Like That in itself felt like a short film or like a standalone movie that you could watch. But would I go back and revisit it if I was in the mood for the series? I don't know. Like it sort of like is a standstill. But you know what? It's a ser It's not a series about zombies and people infected with fungi trying to kill people. It's it's a series about people dealing with this situation. And I think that's that's why it stands out. But um, yeah, I'm excited for season two for sure. The weird thing is though, when it comes to the Last of Us, the season finale happened. I thought it was pretty good. I liked the conflict that the characters left off with and the, the personal dilemma that they had, especially Joel. But no one talked about it the next day, like on YouTube or anywhere else. Like I felt like the discussion instantly died after that show was over. And I guess that you can, the same thing can be said for everything that comes out nowadays because you're bombarded with 18,000 videos every second on every social media outlet platform that exists. And we all now have 
different forms of ADHD. So I guess that's the reason. But other than that, it just felt like there wasn't much conversation after the fact. And maybe that's because everyone knew the answer beforehand that really, really was a hardcore fan if you played the game. So maybe that's why. But just I found it odd. Like the next day there was like no, no, no real buzz anymore for it. Can someone let me know why? Or did I answer my, my own question? The next one comes from Brandon Neville. Thanks for being great, John. I've been watching you since 2012. What is your least favorite MCU film and why? Oh, probably. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot. But if you had, if I had to pick one that I just do not want to go back and rewatch ever again, just the thought of rewatching it makes me want to sedate myself into a coma and never wake up again, or preferably drink a, a gallon of gasoline so I can die a painful death, or like someone said earlier, drink some of the pigeon lady's bath water, that movie would be Eternals. Just really boring. I didn't give a shit about anyone in that movie. I didn't care. I thought it was filmed way too dark. Some of the scenes you couldn't even tell what was going on. There was one scene that takes place during the daytime in a forest where like these shitty CG creatures come to life and you couldn't even tell what was going on because they turned the exposure so far down when they were color grading the film. I was like, this just is like gross to look at. So probably the Eternals. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's... There's other terrible Marvel films, but I could I could probably like eat some popcorn and get through those. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Eternals. So I hope that answered your question, Brandon. Fidel Ray's back once again. I always get pizza on a rainy movie day. In my opinion, Fincher's movies, Batman movies, and Daniel Craig's Bond movies, I'll add Troy to the mix. You're watching Fincher movies on a rainy day, man? I mean, I get it, for sure. It sets the mood. They're gloomy. And if you watch movies like Seven throughout the entire movie, it is actually raining. So I get it. So for me, when I think of a rainy day movie, I think of something like a little bit cheesy and fun ever so slightly. But you're going with like some gloom in there. I could see Grant, I could watch Craig's uh, Casino Royale movie on a rainy day for sure. I don't need a rainy day for the Batman movies, though. Someone says, uh, Lucas says, not someone, you have a name and I'm going to say it. Lucas says, Last of Us was too close to the game for me. Ah, but you see, Lucas, <laughs> you can never appease everyone because... Th- yeah, Sure, could they have switched more things to have more twists and turns from the game? Absolutely. But guess what? The people who love the game, oh, they're going to riot on social media if you change it too much. So it's a fine balance, I think. Really? I thought you disliked Thor 4 more. Thor 4 is an abomination. It's pretty much everything wrong with the new direction of the MCU. Absolutely. It's too indulgent. Comedy is fine, but when you make it a slapstick comedy with shitty jokes where you talk about screaming goats and then you make it so childish to that extent, but then in other scenes you have terrible Taika Waititi jokes where one character references uh, or you have Russell Crowe's character Zeus referencing having an orgy like seven times, which it wasn't funny. Don't get me wrong. Like I'm all for like crude, rude humor, but it just it was like it didn't work. I hated it. But visually speaking, I could at least like get through that movie again. I could, I just couldn't do with the Eternals. I would, I would fall asleep. I just would. Uh, the next one comes from Claudia Rogue John. I was, once again, man, oh, you, thirsty for more. Here we go. I watched The Rock again recently, and most of the action scenes are filmed pretty bad, but yet it is still somehow entertaining. Why is that? It has a vitality about it. It has charismatic actors. And I've said this a billion times before, but I'll say it one more time in this live stream. Sometimes when you have a substandard movie or at least a substandard screenplay or even as you put it, some bad, uh, I I wouldn't say it's choreography, but bad cinematography. Sometimes that charisma from Nicolas Cage and Sean Connery just kicking ass and teaming up to stop nuclear warheads from going off Alcatraz Island, that enhances a film. Charisma from an actor can instantly enhance a film. And I think some of my favorite movies of all time have done that. I I think like 
movies like uh, Point Break, for example, like that charisma from the main leads enhance that film, right? It's you can't duplicate things like that. You just can't. And Hollywood, what they do nowadays, and the reason some films feel bad or, or like like if The Rock, if you made The Rock today, the movie The Rock from Michael Bay, if you made that today and you just put two generic actors in the lead roles, well, it's going to you're going to feel like you're watching a bad movie. But the fact that Nicolas Cage has the charisma to elevate that film, that's it makes it better. And nowadays in Hollywood, they just cast generic people that don't really have much to offer. Right, it's like a dying thing in Hollywood, and it's slowly it's going to phase out because really Hollywood wants to cast generic guy number two, generic guy number three, four, and five to be the leads in movies. And you're just like, okay, anyone could replace him with him. So, I, I think that's why. But plus, man, it was such a pure '90s spectacle movie. It just did shit you couldn't do nowadays. And plus, Zimmer's score. I mean, come on. When you add Zimmer's score to any action scene, it just, it makes it better. Thoughts on them making a Gladiator sequel? Yes, please. I've been waiting for a long time. Now, do I wish Russell Crowe's character, Maximus Decimus Meridius, never died in the first movie and he could somehow magically come back for another installment? Yes, I do. Um, and at one point, there was a discussion to have some kind of weird heavenly version of Gladiator where he's in Elysium and he's like, still alive to some degree. I don't know, but I'm looking forward to it. I love the Roman time period. I, I, I love, I wish they were, there were more movies based on it. So I'll take what I can get. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. But with Ridley Scott, yeah, you never know. He's one of those directors. You get a masterpiece or you get something else. Uh, the next one comes from Collie Wally. Sequel, John, sequel. Scream 1 is for sure the best. Absolutely. It is, man. Oh, here we go. All right. We got a new question in here from uh, a friend of the channel, Katie Video. And if you guys don't know who Katie Video is, uh, awesome, awesome artist. Uh, has an Instagram account. Uh, makes really cool retro VHS covers of movies, old and new. Uh, so go check out Katie video over on Instagram. Give her a follow. She actually sent me one of her, I, I'm going to call it a piece of art and it's, it's back here. I'll grab it in one second, but let me read the question. Oh, you, Oh, 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 well, I only bring it up because, Oh, it's you. You're the rocket man. Yes. Yes. Only a line cage could de deliver. I don't know, John. How about we just go find some bombs? What does he say? How in the name of Zeus's butthole did you get out of your cell? That's I, not exactly the, the exact quote, but something like that. I love it. I'm going to get you like a fish, boy. I, I love it. I love it, man. Um, let me show you th something really cool. Hang on. So this is from Katie video. Um, and by the way, thanks for the very generous super chat. And now I'm going to give you a shout out. That's worth it. Um, this is Nightcrawler, my favorite movie. And now my favorite VHS movie of all time. There's actually a VHS in there of the movie. Look at that artwork. Look at the subtle, subtle watermark right there. And the bold yellow lettering. I love it, man. So yeah, you guys can pick up retro VHS covers from her on her Instagram account, her website. Um, and the name of the company is Video Production News, a professional news gathering service. That is how it should be read and that is how it should be said. So thanks for the, the question. All right. So speaking of Zeus's butthole, the next question is from Bill Oberg, who says, enjoy your content. Cheers. Well, thanks, Bill. Thanks for that, man. Um, thank you for that. I like to think of my content like Zeus's butthole. <laughs> uh, I don't know what that means. It's, it's kind of good, but shitty. I don't know. Um, but thanks for that, Bill. Thank you, man. Very generous of you. Thanks, Bill. Uh, Claudio Rogajan. Here we go, man. Once again, Claudio Rogajan. 
I know I'm nitpicking right now, but I just find it funny how the Marines in The Rock instantly become dumber, so it would be believable a man in his mid-60s and a scientist could take them down. Well, no, 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 no. What you're failing to mention is it's not just some dude in his... I'm doing my best Nicolas Cage right now. It's not just some dude in his 60s. It's an ex operative that worked for the special forces the british special special forces i believe he essentially was james bond okay so he's not just some dude right and he's also escaped from alcatraz once before and then the scientist stanley goodspeed well he's technically an fbi agent uh i'm an fbi actually that's a keanu reeves line but he's an fbi agent man and he finds himself throughout the, the story and he, and he becomes the man he's always wanted to be because he needs to protect his wife and his unborn baby. So yeah, it's a great movie. It's a, it's like a perfect team up movie. And I would, I would dare to say it's the last great Sean Connery movie we've ever gotten. Winners go home and fuck the prom queen. Absolutely. All right. Night King 01, I didn't miss anything. Here we go. Night King 01 says, wait, John, how was the Conan, the Conan soundtrack, Conan soundtrack? Sorry, it's getting late. So true story, after we were done talking about the Conan Barbarian soundtrack, I did go online and I listened to it and it's everything I I thought it was from memory, but it was beautiful. Not only did I listen to it, Night King 01, I consumed it. So yeah, I actually did listen to it for like 30 minutes as I was cruising around reading some emails. It's beautiful stuff. All right, guys, I'm going to answer just uh, like one or two more questions and I'm going to wrap up tonight's live show. I got to edit some videos and get to bed and eat the rest of my Chipotle, which is in the fridge right now, just waiting for me saying, John, come eat me. All right. Brandon Neville says, okay, John, I have two questions for you. Which one is your favorite Dark Knight or Nightcrawler? I hate that question. I hate it. I hate it. It's so I've said it. I've said it before. Nightcrawler, I think is my favorite movie of all time because I like that. I can own that. Like a lot of people love the Dark Knight as their favorite movie, right? But for me, like, I don't feel like a lot of people would say Nightcrawler is their favorite movie. And I do mean that. That's a genuine statement when I say it. But for me, if you could go in and take the simple things that I like about movies and and movies that stand out where you have dark humor, you have sort of an, an, an almost an antagonist character portraying the protagonist at the same time. I like that conflict. You know, I like characters that will do anything it takes to get the, the job done. But you like them like Lou Bloom is utterly insane. He's a sociopath. But you kind of like him. You want you kind of want to see him win in a weird way. I love it. Like someone went into my brain and gave me that with Nightcrawler. So I'm gonna go. I if you said action movie, I'm I'm gonna go with Dark Knight. If you said favorite movie of all time, I'm gonna go with Nightcrawler. His second question though is favorite comedy of all time. Comedy is one of those things. That, especially when it comes to comedy movies, I I go back and forth. Like, there are some slapstick comedy movies that make me laugh, right? There are scenes in movies like Tommy Boy, for example, that I still laugh out to this day. Like, when he has his little muffin, his little, his little, is it a, yeah, he has the little muffin, the little roll at the diner table. And he's like, it's my little pet. I pet it and I poke and I go, "Mm, you naughty, you naughty. And then I go, (laughs) and he rips it apart. I laugh my ass off still at that. Or the the scene where he's trying to sell some brake pads and he lights the fucking car on table, the the little toy car on the table, and he lights it on fire. And he has the EMS driver get out and go, what's that smell? Like, that is glorious comedy to me. That's the shit that makes me laugh. But on the flip side of that, I watch American Psycho and I laugh hysterically like a crazy person every time Patrick Bateman is having an internal monologue with himself. So that's the weird thing with me. So I can't 
I can't just pick one comedy movie that's so... I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. Funniest dark comedy to me is probably American Psycho. One of the funniest, like, modern-esque standard comedy movies for me would probably be, like, like Super Bad. Super Bad was like a, a good standard comedy to me. I hope that was fulfilling. I hope I answered your question. Okay, I think I rambled on for 12 minutes about that. You guys think you guys are killing it tonight. Thank you guys for the questions. Thank you guys so much. You guys are too nice to me. Please go to Orlando so I can see you guys this weekend. Um all right. The next one comes from Seth Hall. Thanks for the question, Seth. Here we go. Very generous of you. You're too generous, man. All right. I showed my fiance Batman and Robin last week. She had absolutely no idea that George Clooney played Batman. What's another great, horrible movie to show her? Well... Have you, has she seen Morbius yet? Has she seen Daredevil with Ben Affleck? Bullseye. Has she seen? Mm. I don't want to waste her time, but I, I wouldn't even say it's so bad. It's, it's not even so bad. It's good. It's just bad. I was going to say steal with Shaquille O'Neal, but don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Just what the trailer would be fulfilling enough. So I'm going to go with watch daredevil with Ben Affleck from what was that? Oh, two, Oh three. And, um, go with that because that's mildly entertaining. Like, I think there's like something to kind of like, you have some evanescence music in there. Like you can kind of watch it and be like, Oh, this is really shitty, but I don't hate myself for doing it. I would say that should be your next movie night. <laughs> go with that. Uh, thanks for the question, man. Night King 01 says, what's sad is that the Riders of Doom track is better than the main theme. One of the greatest tracks ever recorded, truly underrated. Yeah, man, there was some good stuff in that, in that, in that score. You know, the weird thing with me is like, sometimes I listen to film scores and like the main theme of the song isn't my favorite, or maybe I don't even like it that much. But then it's like the secondary track or the third track I enjoy more. For example, I'll give you one like um, the soundtrack or the score to Interstellar. Like the main theme, it's good. Like most of the music on that that soundtrack is really good. But I love the track called Coward. That is my favorite. I love it. Uh, Cloudy Rogue John says you should still watch Sons of Anarchy at one point. I'll watch it, man. I just, I don't know. I'm not really in the mood to watch Ron Perlman be a biker right now. I know. I know. Like it just, I, I gotta one day, one day I'll get there. I promise. Uh, Jack Taylor says favorite Sean Connery bond film. Thanks for everything over the years. I have not rewatched the Sean Connery Bond movies in probably the better part of 15 years. And I would say, what's, I always forget the, 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 it's not the first one. It might be the second or third one. Sean Connery. Where is it? Oh God. Sean Connery did a lot of shitty movies in the in the nineties, didn't he? Wasn't that that was a weird time for his career? I can't find it right now. You had Doctor No, Doc, Goldfinger. Oh, maybe it was Goldfinger. Yeah, I think Goldfinger. Okay, yeah, it wasn't. I was thinking. I I knew it wasn't Doctor No. I it was Goldfinger. So I'm gonna go with Goldfinger as my favorite. But I know a lot of people like Diamonds Forever, too. But I'd go with Goldfinger for sure. What about you guys? Let me know. From Russia with Love. Yeah. Dude, I have not watched a lot of the older Bond movies in a long time. I have a buddy who loves them. And he can tell me every detail whenever I ask him. I'm by no means a Bond expert. Like, I know the Craig movies. I, I know the Pierce Brosnan movies. But going further back than that, like... License to Kill and beyond further back, like they kind of, 
all kind of blur together to me. I should go back one day and rewatch them. Uh, Dr. Sick Evil says, what's up, John? It's always sick to catch you live. I've been looking for other movies that have the same momentum and pacing as Good Time and Nightcrawler. I came across a movie on Hulu called Pusher. It's pretty, it's a pretty stressful movie. Pusher. That sounds vaguely familiar. I don't think I've seen it though. Pusher. Hmm. I mean, I guess you could watch Uncut Gems. If you haven't seen that, I'm sure you have, but that sort of has like a dark CD vibe to it. That's really unsettling, but yeah, man, for sure. Um, someone recommended to me and it's a, it's an eighties film starring John Travolta. I'm, I'm not going to recommend it. I didn't love it as much as some people do. It's called blowout. Um, it has sort of like a night crawler esque vibe to it ever so slightly. Um, but you could check it out. You could check that out. Kenji. How's it going, Kenji? I saw The Whale for the first time, and it's depressing, but yet heart, uh, yet a heartfelt movie. Now, that's a movie to watch on a rainy day. Excuse me. I'm going to go cry in my bed right now. Yeah, me too. Actually, I'm going to itch my eye right now. Yeah, The Whale for me was simple, it was pure, and it was all about a performance that took place in one location, and I loved it. I like. I didn't see Brendan Fraser in that role. I just saw this man who's truly depressed and like has nothing left. Um, it was definitely a movie that just made me not want to eat for a minute or two. I'll tell you, I'll say that. But yeah, um... That's definitely a rainy day movie. That's a movie that will induce depression and anxiety and sadness. So yeah, for sure. Good rainy day movie. See, on rainy days, I don't want to watch sad movies. I know that's crazy. I want to watch like happy movies on rainy days. I want to watch sad movies on nice days. That way when the movie's over, right, and I'm all depressed, I can go outside in the sun and go, okay, okay, it's okay, John. It's okay. Let the let the warmth of the sunshine enter into your body and take you away. And then my neighbors look outside and like, what the fuck is he doing? Uh, Night King 01 says, I have to say, doesn't it feel like in John Wick 4, Keanu Reeves seems to have suffered some kind of concussion. He is struggling with those lines, man. I think he, I almost feel like the directors said, okay, let's see what we can get away with. Like you're, you're doing the Keanu thing, but let's times it by 25 and for no odd reason, or for no reason whatsoever, just pause. Like you're confused and you forgot what you were going to say, and then finish it. Like, like I said earlier in the chat, it's almost like his character, John Wick's character, is learning to talk for the first time. It's like watching a little baby talk for the first time. Dad, da, like it's 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 so interesting. Except. This toddler's shooting people and kicking ass. I don't know. I love it though. Like I said, he's the only he's one of the only few guys left in Hollywood that can get away with that shit. Him and Nicolas Cage, man, there's not much not many other players in the game that can do it. All right, last question here from Brandon Neville. Last question for me before you enjoy your Chipotle. Thank you for that. Uh what are you most looking forward to in the upcoming Flash movie. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Probably Keaton back as Batman and five minutes of Ben Affleck as Batman. Once again, I, I think just them returning to the big screen will be the saving grace of that movie. And I'm hoping they just kill off the flash as a Miller in that movie. It's just a big bang occurs and everything resets and we go a different direction. Hopefully that's what I'm hoping. I don't know if that's what we're going to get, but that's what I'm holding out hope for. Was that all the questions? I don't want to miss anything. John, over the top two, any ideas? Millions of ideas. Sylvester Stallone's son, Mikey, grows up, right? And he sort of takes over the family business. And what does he have to do to save that business one day? He has to arm wrestle. Pure and simple. Arm wrestling is the new currency. That's how you, that's how you pay your bills. 
Um, that's what I, something like that, maybe not that, but something similar would be fine with that. And, and especially if Stallone comes back as like a supporting role, I doubt this movie would ever happen. I don't think anyone besides me and one other person would want to watch it, but maybe one day. Claudio Rogue John with another question. Forgot to ask you, to, I'll never, Claudio never lets me leave. Here we go. It's okay though. Uh, forgot to ask, did you like Marco Zoror Zor, Zor, in John Wick 4? He was the right-hand man to the main villain. I'm trying to think of that character. Man, I don't remember that. Why do I not remember that character? I'll look it up for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was okay, I guess. He was okay. He was okay. I, he kind of just blended in for me. But I did really like the third act of John Wick. I did like the final showdown. It actually it, it kind of surprised me in a slight way. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap up the live show there. Could you arm Russell Stallone? Yes, but I wouldn't win. And what would that say about me? A 73-year-old man beat me. Actually, I would take pride in that if that man was Stallone. Uh, so either way, guys, I want to say thanks for watching the live show. Thanks for joining in. Thanks for looking at my stupid face for a couple of hours. And if you guys are going to Orlando Megacon this weekend, Friday and Saturday, I will be doing doing a couple panels there. Uh, like I said, the details are on Twitter right now. Look out for a post or over on Facebook. There's a post there I put out all about Megacon. And everyone who's going should be a good time. So if you're going, please find me at one of the panels. And afterwards, we will have a meet and greet. We can take pictures, do high fives, or we can arm wrestle like we just talked about. Whatever you want to do. As always, stay safe, guys. Take care. I'm going to go eat some Chipotle now. And... Uh, Have a good night. Bye-bye.